So if you're looking for unique checkpoints that aren't realistic or anime, then there are some to choose from. And in this video, I'll be taking you through four of these unique checkpoints so you can spend less time reading and more time creating. A big thanks to all the supporters, but hit that like button and let me give it to you bite-sized. So Toon Yu is our first checkpoint developed by Bradcat. And this is capable of creating these cartoon images, which have a mix between Western concept art and Pixar style designs. This can do safer work and non-safer work images, male and female, and a variety of designs, both organic and inorganic. Looking at the description, we're currently on beta version 6, and we get some recommended settings to use, alongside encouragement to use after detailer to fix problems in the face. I started with replicating the example image, and we get a brilliant result, which captures the large eyes and colourful palette expected from a Pixar style cartoon. Next, I wanted to try my own prompts, and this checkpoint handles many things well, from anatomy, to hands, and even the face, which does look a bit odd compared to the rest of the style, but it's still okay. But this checkpoint does handle facial expression surprisingly well, probably some of the best I've seen among any checkpoints, and you can see them in this comparison, where we have a range of emotions from angry to sad, happy and confused. I also ran this checkpoint through a few gender and species descriptors to see what it would give me, and the results were what I expected for the most part, except the horse was captured accurately. It's safe to say you may struggle with animals or non-character images, unless you work some magic with image to image. Then I tried some landscape pieces, and some will need some more work and specific prompts, but the city and castle look fantastic. I especially like the water on the Atlantis piece, where the water does look convincing. Finally, I wanted to try a couple of objects to see how they looked, and you will probably need to do some work to get rid of any characters if you only wanted objects on their own, because outside of our deformed airplane, every other image has characters, which seems to be the focus of this checkpoint. But if you're looking to do characters for, say, comic books, then this will work as either a great checkpoint or something to be used when combined with Refiner for a more unique style without having to train a model. Our next checkpoint is Pixel developed by SpyBG, and this checkpoint specialises in pixel art backgrounds, but it can also do very simple character sprites to inspire your creations. On its own, this can't seem to do complex sprites in different poses, or entirely replace the process for generating video game assets, but it can help inspire your landscapes by providing art, which can be sliced up and modified for testing gameplay before commissioning for professional assets. The checkpoints page doesn't have a lot of information other than some background information on its creation, so we'll have to depend on the generation data to get some examples on how we could prompt this checkpoint. Something I'll note which is super important is to download the nfixer embedding located within the video's description. This embedding is required for getting the correct images and without this embedding your images won't look right. I started with the example image, and we get the same results, which look pretty good right from the get-go. Everything is easily identifiable, from the Japanese-style buildings, to the mountains that have depth, and the green shrubbery. I went for some other variations like a knight standing before a castle, a monk meditating on a mountain, and an alien spaceship in the distance, and I think that while some aspects have been captured well, it missed the mark on a few of the designs, like the alien spaceship and the medieval knights. I wanted to try and generate an environment on its own to see if we could get a working playable level from a simple generation, and this isn't a bad result. We have things we can jump on, so with a few invisible collision boxes, you would have a character moving around. But something which has bothered me is this lack of sharpness within the image. There's this fuzzy and somewhat airbrushed look to the assets, which is somewhat distracting. I tried fixing this by upping the sampling steps, and it did help a bit, giving us a far more defined image, so more sampling steps is definitely a good choice. Next, I wanted to try and generate a character on their own, and I started off with this priest, and we get a pretty good result, although the result looks more like a mosaic than pixel art. This is a good point to mention that this checkpoint isn't actually creating pixel art, but is rather replicating the pixel art style, so if you zoom in, you won't see every pixel coloured in accurately, and there will be odd shapes up close. A solution to this is to use an extension that turns images into pixel art and lowers the resolution further, allowing you to get a more authentic look by creating these square jagged edges until you get a result that's less smooth around the edges and this also works for environments. 
Lastly, I wanted to try and generate single assets for use in any pixel art project and the results were somewhat better than I expected. The gun stood out to me as being the best asset, looking genuinely fantastic and detailed with the trigger and other components you would expect. The gold coin was also good, but other images like the cloud and helmet may need some work with the crate not turning out as well as I would like. I think all in all, this checkpoint can be good for generating both pixel art and assets for video games, saving you time from having to draw from scratch or plugging the gap in skill by providing you with templates you can modify to your liking. Then we have Vivid Watercolors, developed by White Fatalis, which can create fantastic watercolor artwork, perfect for if you need some prints for your wall or perhaps a unique comic strip. The checkpoints page doesn't have a ton of information, but just enough to get you started, where they point out the importance of using the watercolor style prompt to trigger the effect alongside some example prompts. I tried replicating the example image using its generation data, and we got some minor differences, but nothing too substantial, and the overall picture looks fantastic, capturing the same level of detail promised. Something I like about this checkpoint is how it handles the curves and shadows around the neck bone, nose, lips and other areas to show overall form of the character, as some checkpoints tend to focus purely on the face while losing detail on other areas of the body. Next I wanted to try out my own custom prompts, including testing some emotions to see whether the checkpoint can recognise it, and the results are somewhat disappointing. The faces all look the same across emotions, but we're still getting that nice watercolor style. I tried to see whether I could improve the results by referencing a celebrity and using Bryce Dallas Howard. And while this shouldn't be required, it did help the results. And I noticed a few things as well. One is that in some images, I'd end up with two faces in one. So it's worth playing around with the prompts to fix that problem. The second point is that specifying a celebrity did help with the results. So it may be worth including one with your other prompts to ensure you end up with something that is recognisable and detailed. I tried swapping out some different artistic style keywords to see what variations we can get in our art. There were minimal differences across the image using the prompts by default, but if you put the artistic style in waiting, then you get a more varied set of images across some prompts. I tried generating some landscapes, and while you can get fantastic looking landscapes generated, you will need to work on your prompts to remove the characters, as this checkpoint does seem to have a preference wherever possible. But on their own, the landscape pieces look fantastic, except for the river, which gave me a portrait with a unique texture. Lastly, I wanted to try and generate a few random pictures, and I noticed that I was getting duplicate faces again, and this is somewhat corrected by fixing the error in the negative prompt, and moving the negative prompts at the end to the front, while adding some parenthesis. This somewhat helped improve the quality across all images, and we can see it can handle objects like coffee, cars and clouds, and even animals, but it does need some assistance, understanding that a car is not a person. But there's something this checkpoint can do, and that's applying a watercolour effect to images through image to image. For example, I can take Bryce Dallas Howard, adding some quality prompts, and use a denoising strength of 0.5 to get a watercolour painting with one single face and great accuracy. Therefore, perhaps using this as a refiner instead of a standalone checkpoint for generating images is the way to go for the most optimal results. The final unique checkpoint is Impressionism Oil Painting, developed by Krantis. This checkpoint will produce a nice oil on canvas painting with visible brushstrokes like a Van Gogh painting. The description gives some background to the checkpoint's development and a tip for a more painterly look, but most of our prompting will come from the example images where I'll replicate this guy to start. Our image comes out looking fantastic, with amazing details on the lighting, wrinkles, folds and curves which make up the image, with even the hair looking fantastic. I wanted to try my luck with a variety of facial expressions to see if I could understand it on the custom character, and unfortunately it didn't recognise the facial expressions even on a higher weighting. But I do like how the images turned out, there's a fantastic amount of both detail and anatomical accuracy in the images. Now looking at landscapes, these turned out nice, but with differing levels of detail. The forest looks really detailed and is probably my favourite piece, while the planet is less detailed to the point where the image is down to interpretation. Are those buildings, dust clouds, who knows? Then the Arctic one has this nice bird among snowy hills and the colours look just right. 
Lastly, this checkpoint seems to handle a random assortment of concepts very accurately, from the car, to the delicious looking cake, the glass of iced tea, and even the fish, with one of them being deformed. The case of two concepts in one image can be prompted out, but the actual details themselves are amazing. But hopefully you found a checkpoint that you like, I'm personally a fan of the cartoon checkpoint, and if so, consider dropping a like and supporting through Patreon, Ko-Fi, or at the very least subscribing, and thanks for nearly 5k subscribers. This is Bite Size Genius, and I hope you enjoyed.